All right, I wanna welcome everyone to our live Saturday morning presentation. As I say every Saturday morning, you can see my opening slide and you'll know what we're gonna talk about today and that's the art of asking questions. Uh, before I get into the presentation, I just wanna let you know that I learned this skill a long time ago. And of all the different business skills that I've learned over my lifetime, I would have to say that this is the most important skill that I've ever learned because not only does it apply to business, but it also applies to life in general. And if you can learn this art of asking questions, uh, it really can serve you well and be able to identify with the person that you're talking to what's important to them. Uh, especially when you're helping people understand the importance of nitric oxide therapy, it's really not about what's important to you. It's understanding what's important to the person that you're talking to so that you know how to redirect information towards them and create the interest for them wanting that information. So in today's presentation, we wanna give you some basics to the art of asking questions and then also give you uh, some examples of how you can apply that in our synergy business. Now, as, I, as I've already said, and that this one skill, uh, if you learn this one skill, you'll be able to generate qualified leads that will become customers and or business builders. Learn how to effectively combine the skill with your elevator speech and testimonials and the resources that are available to you and you'll become a dynamo in your synergy business. It will actually accelerate the growth of your synergy business. And as I go through today's presentation, I'm gonna show you a combination of some different things, but it all starts with the art of asking questions and you build off of this process. Now, until you learn how to ask questions, you're absolutely not gonna be able to know if the information that you're sharing with people really speaks to their needs. And I've seen this happen so often in Synergy Worldwide as well as other business opportunities. People go immediately into their product. And what happens is people get overwhelmed by your passion for their product, but they feel like you're trying to sell them. So they end up putting up their defensive mechanisms. And I think that if you look at your own life personally, when you've either met a person, whether it be a salesperson or someone who's really passionate about something, and they all of a sudden dump information onto you, I think if you look at your reaction to that is typically for most people, you begin to put up the walls because all of a sudden, you know, you're not sure if you want this information, you're not sure if you want this conversation, you're not wanting to be sold on something. Uh, and so this whole aspect of the art of asking questions is to help you come at a different approach to the individual so that you don't put the walls up, but rather you actually create an engagement of conversation that is important to that individual, which then allows you to get clues that will help you then position additional information to the art of asking questions and create true interest and relationship. Now, again, I've already talked about this. So the, by learning to ask targeted questions, you can quickly identify the person's needs and interests that you're talking to. This way you can always target your information to make it relevant to them and not to you. And, I, and I, I'm gonna most likely repeat myself several times during this presentation, but this is really key. You want to make this about them, not about you. You wanna be able to use the art of asking questions to identify their needs and their interests. And if they have a need for nitric oxide therapy, then you can use the art of asking questions to develop that need to create interest in wanting them to get more information that is going to be relevant to them and how that information can solve their challenge. So we wanna go through this process today of helping you improve this skill by helping you better understand how to ask questions. Questions that create interest, whether it be in nitric oxide therapy and a desire for more information to help them address their health concerns, or whether it be in microbiome research or holistic skin care or natural energy or any of the other synergy products that we have that are ideal. 
Now, I'm going to give you some of the technical aspects of the art of asking questions. You know, I, I don't look at, when I, when I apply the art of asking questions today, I've, I've done this for so many years that I don't bother to worry about whether it's a white question, a green question, a black question, or a red question. All I know is that I'm going to ask certain questions to be able to identify their current situation, be able to identify what their desired situation would be, see if they have any obstacles in that process, how would they feel if they were able to be able to accomplish certain things, and then as I gather that information, I put it into a template, always using that person's first name so that if I could show you how this, this, and this, would you? And, and, and although I won't always use that same format, it's still the basis of everything that I do in the art of asking questions. Once I've asked enough questions to gather the information, I then put it into a question that demands a response, an action. And you'll see this process as we go through today's presentation. Now, as I said, this, temple, this template is fairly simple. It's first name, if I could show you how blank, blank, and blank, would you blank? And the skill of the art of asking questions is to be able to ask those questions that will allow you to fill in those blanks. And if you're on a telephone talking to a person, use a pen and paper to remember that as you ask a question, what was their response? Write it down. You can even do this when you're sitting down with a person on a one-on-one -on -one presentation. You can even use the, ask of, the art of asking questions. You could say, Bob, you know, as we're talking about uh, some of your health issues today, do you mind if I write some of this information down just to help me remember what you're saying? That's a question. And if you do that, you're going to find that nine times out of 10, the person's going to say yes. So that helps you in this process of being able to identify the things that are important to Bob or Sally or whoever the person is that you're talking to, and at the same time, write it down to reinforce it in your mind as well as to have it there so that you're able to connect these things together. Uh, so, so using... You know, using this process works whether you're talking to a person on the telephone or in, in person with them, you can be able to write that information down to help you better understand how to target the final question back to that individual. So let's say that um, you're talking with an individual. And since I already use Bob, I'm going to use Bob's name in this presentation. And, and so I'm talking with Bob, and it could be a family event. And, and if it is, I, and I know Bob as a relative, then I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, use this first question. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name, Bob, your first name. Uh, if I already know Bob, I don't want to use that question. But if I'm in an event where I've just met Bob for the first time, and we're dialoguing, and in that dialogue, some things came up with regards to his health issues. And, he, and Bob communicates to me that he has a high blood pressure issue, or that he has someone uh, in his family that has a high blood pressure issue. Uh, one of the things that I'll do, because I'm not good at remembering people's first names when I first hear them, is I'm going to use this question, I'm, I'm sorry, but I didn't catch your first name. Now, if the person's got a name tag, then I'll just look at their name tag, and I'll, again, skip that first question. But if I don't have any of those prompts to be able to know their first name, then I'm gonna use this first question. And the person will share it. Yeah, my name is Bob. So Bob, I take it that you have high blood pressure. Or if Bob was talking about a family member that had it, then I would just morph that question. So Bob, I take it that you have a family member or whatever that relationship is that has high blood pressure. So if it's personal to Bob, he's gonna say yes. And then I'm going to say, well, are you currently taking any medication to control your blood pressure? Now, that's a natural question to ask Bob. Bob's not going to feel like I'm prying information. What I'm doing is I'm doing a sequential, uh, a sequential process of asking questions to get additional information because the next question follows or builds off of the previous question. So, Bob, I take it that you have high blood pressure. Yes. Are you currently taking any medication to control your blood pressure? 
So I want to engage Bob in a conversation. I want to know what Bob is doing currently for high blood pressure. Maybe he's not on any medication. Maybe he's trying to use some natural methods to be able to get his blood pressure back into control. Maybe he's doing stress management, biofeedback. You know, there's all these different things besides medication that Bob could be doing. I just want to find out what Bob's doing. Are you, are you currently using? No, I'm not using any medication. What would you be doing to control your blood pressure? So again, depending upon your response, there's different ways that you need to go through this process. And as I said, I purposely ask a person to repeat their first name for two reasons. One, to help me. Now, if I already see their name tag and the name tag says Bob, then I'm still going to use Bob's name in a question because people like to hear their name. They like to be acknowledged by their first name. And so I'll do that in a, in a question and as I go through the process, I'll use Bob's name in several other questions to, again, help Bob understand that, one, I'm recognizing him by his first name. And secondly, people like to hear their name. So I use that to continue to build a rapport with Bob. So I'll get into some green questions. What are green questions? Well, they're, the, they're a desired situation. So. I've asked Bob a series of questions. I've gotten information. So Bob, would you like your blood pressure reading to be normal without the use of medications? That would be assuming Bob told me that he's on medications. Maybe Bob's using biofeedback. How has that worked for you, Bob? Well, so far, not so good. Well, Bob, would you like your blood pressure reading to be normal, especially since the biofeedback's not working for you? Uh, so again, uh, you know, I, all I can do is give you a template because the art of asking questions, it's both a skill as well as it's art. Art is a creative process. So I'm using a skill, a technique, but I got to be creative in the process because I don't know the answers that Bob's going to give me. So I need to be able to use the skill to take the answers and create the artistic process of being able to adapt that skill to what Bob is telling me. So Bob shares with me information, and then I'll go into a black question. A black question looks to identify obstacles or challenges a person might be facing. Now, if Bob tells me that he's on medication and it's not working, and I've asked my previous question, I could say something, well, have you tried any other methods to control your blood pressure? Well, the doctor's tried me on three different types of medications now. Or if Bob's using biofeedback as a way to control his blood pressure. Uh, no, I've, I've just gone down this road of biofeedback and that I haven't tried anything else. So, uh, so again, the whole purpose of that question is just to get, con get more information so that I can understand Bob's situation, what he's doing to control his blood pressure, things that have worked, things that haven't worked, frustrations that he might have, so I can lead into a red question, basically what his feelings are. You know, red questions help to reveal feelings. They're important because people make decisions based on feelings. And I want to make sure that I both acknowledge them and properly use them. You, you, you can manipulate feelings or you can use feelings in a, in a constructive way that is not manipulative, but at the same time helps lead to an action because people will take actions based upon feelings more than they'll take actions based upon facts. So I want to harness that. I want to be able to acknowledge that in my process because I, my whole sole purpose is to help Bob discover a way that could address his blood pressure. And so I want to use this question, Bob, how would your life change if you were able to bring your blood pressure back to normal? Now, you'll notice that when I said that question, I have a rhythm to the way that I ask my questions. You're going to find that when you begin to do this process, your rhythm 
is different than my rhythm. That's okay because you want to be able to ask your questions in the style that you talk. And you'll notice that when I do presentations or when I'm asking questions, I will give information in bits and pieces with pauses so that a person can take the information, process it as I continue to give them additional information. So rather than just rattling off, Bob, how would your life change if you were able to bring your blood pressure back to normal? Well, if I did that, it would still be a question, but Bob may not have been able to process that information because I said it so fast as opposed to, Bob, how would your life change? Notice I emphasize change. If you were able to bring your blood pressure, again, I emphasize your blood pressure back to normal. And, and so again, it's just a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an art, it's a skill. And as you get better at it, you're going to find that you're going to have even better success to it. Now, once I've asked my series of questions, and sometimes it's a couple questions, and sometimes it's a lot of questions, I'm ready to ask my template question, Bob. And you notice I say Bob, and I stopped, I hesitated, because I'm looking to get Bob's attention. Uh, most people, when someone says your name, you perk up. Now, if someone says Dan, I have a different reaction to it than if someone says Daniel. If I hear the Daniel, it most likely means that I'm in trouble. If I hear the Dan, then it's most likely someone just wanting to talk to me. So, Bob, if I could show you how to bring your blood pressure back to normal and reduce your anxiety about this issue, would you be willing to learn how nitric oxide therapy can naturally address your high blood pressure issue? So again, I've gathered the information and I now put it into a template question. And that template question, that last template question is all designed to create an action, a response. And if I've done my art of asking questions, all my preliminary questions to this template question, if I've done my process properly, I'm going to increase the probability that Bob is going to say yes. Now, if I'm in a situation where I need to do the Cliff Notes version of the same process, because let's say we're in a we're in a situation where I just met Bob, we're at a dinner function. In my conversation with Bob, he indicated to me that he has high blood pressure, and Bob's got a name tag, just like I've got a name tag and we're about ready to sit down for dinner, I would do the Cliff Notes version. I'd say, Bob, if I understood correctly, you have high blood pressure. Bob would acknowledge that back with a yes. Have you ever heard of nitric oxide therapy as a natural way to address your high blood pressure? And I know that if I do this Cliff Notes version and use that second question, you know, the first question is to acknowledge that I heard it from Bob, but I want to make sure that what I heard was correct, and I want Bob to acknowledge it, because if Bob acknowledges it, then Bob also acknowledges that I heard him. He appreciates the fact that I heard him, and now I come with my template question, have you ever heard of nitric oxide therapy as a natural way to address your high blood pressure? And I know when I ask that question, that nine times out of 10, I'm going to get a no, that they've never heard of nitric oxide therapy. So before Bob goes to sit down for dinner and I go to sit down for dinner, I can do something like, well, that doesn't surprise me. Most people have never heard about this Nobel Prize winning information. Would you like me to send you a fantastic video that will help you understand how nitric oxide therapy can naturally address your high blood pressure. Now, this is being recorded this morning. It's going to go up on Tuesday on our, on our 
uh, YouTube channel for our Synergy family, as well as it's going to go in out in our Tuesday newsletter. So you're going to have access to this information where you can stop this presentation, the, the video at this part of the presentation. You can copy this down and then put it into your own words. You know, when Bob says no, I want him to understand that he's not stupid, that it doesn't surprise me. Most people have never heard about this Nobel Prize winning information. So I want to help Bob know that he's not the only one in this boat, that I've seen this reaction before, and that the information I'm about to share with him is Nobel Prize winning information. That adds credibility to what I'm talking about. Would you like me? Here's the question. Would you like me to send you, oh, a really boring video? No, a fantastic video that will help you understand how nitric oxide therapy can naturally address your high blood pressure. Again, if Bob is interested in addressing his high blood pressure and is interested in finding a natural way to do it, then I'm going to get a yes. And I can tell you from experience, I'll get that yes nine times out of 10. Now, if Bob's got to go to the table to sit down for dinner and I've got to go to the table to sit down for dinner, I'll just quickly make a comment to Bob, a question to Bob. I'll say, great, Bob, we got to sit down for dinner. Would it be all right after dinner that I come and, and revisit this with you so I can get your email address and then send you a link to this video? Would that be all right? I'm looking for Bob to give me permission to follow up with him. Or if we have enough time, then I would just use this question, great. Would you be willing to give me your email address so that I can send you a link to this video? Would you? See, that's not a demand. That's a, that's a respectful question. I could say this question, Bob, give me your video or give me your email address so that I can send you a direct link to this video. That would be a statement rather than a question. Understand the art of, the, art of asking question is all about controlling a conversation. And what I want Bob to feel is that he is in complete control of the conversation, but me asking questions, I'm really the one that's controlling the conversation, except Bob feels that he is. That's how I want Bob to feel. I want him to feel that he's got complete control over the conversation. So everything that I do in the art of asking questions is all about being respectful to Bob and positioning questions in a way that gives him the ability to control, in his mind, the outcome. Great. Would you be willing to give me your email address so that I can send you a link to this video? And again, if Bob gives me the yes, then I'm going to uh, make sure that I get all the proper information, his email address. Uh, I want to make sure that I have his phone number. Uh, maybe I'll ask him for his business card. Great. Bob, do you have a business card? I won't give him my business card at that point in time. If he's got a business card, fantastic. So is this the email address you would like me to send it to? Now, Bob, what would be a good day and time for me to call you to make sure that you had the opportunity to, you know, that you received my email, the opportunity to watch the video and see if you got any questions? Again, I want to establish a follow-up because if I'm only going to just give Bob information and, and, and leave it up to Bob to contact me, then I might as well not even go through this process. Follow-up is critically important. So I want to make sure that if I'm giving Bob this information, then I have the ability to follow up with Bob to, again, increase my probability of being able to acquire Bob as a client. Now, if you notice in that whole presentation that I did, I never mentioned anything about Progen Plus. That's gonna come up later as I build my relationship with Bob. And if you position Progen Plus as the product of choice, 
then again, we've, we've done a Saturday presentation on this where we use the unique selling properties to help validate why Project Plus is the product of choice. Now, maybe that comes up in the conversation. You know, maybe, maybe Bob asked me a question. Well, you, you seem to be knowledgeable in this area. Is there a, some type of product that helps control blood pressure? You know, that would be a question that Bob's asking me. So Bob turns the table and asks me a question. Well, I want to be able to respond to Bob. I would say something to the effect, well, Bob, since you asked that question, yes, there is a product. In fact, there are hundreds of products in the marketplace that harness nitric oxide therapy. But the product of choice that I use and the one that I use for all my clients is a product called Pro Arch 9 Plus. And the reason why I use it, Bob, is one, it's the only l 9 supplement recognized by the medical community. It's been listed now for four years in what's called the physician's desk reference. That's the main guideline that physicians use for what they recommend to their patients. Secondly, it's the only clinically proven l 9 supplement in the marketplace. So it's clinically proven to produce higher levels of this gas called nitric oxide that's going to help you with your blood pressure, as well as it's clinically proven to prevent vascular inflammation. There's 262 verified quality assurance tests, but I've been in the nutrition industry for a very long period of time, over 25 years. The problem in the nutrition industry is that a lot of products never meet their label claims. I never have to worry about this with ProArgent Plus. I know that all my clients are always going to get the same reproducible results. And if for some reason they don't, it's a 100% money back guarantee. So yeah, that's the product that I would recommend to you. But first, Bob, it's important for you to understand how nitric oxide therapy can address your high blood pressure. So is it all right if I send you a link to this video on how nitric oxide therapy naturally addresses high blood pressure. So I've taken and answered Bob's question and then what I do is I would then turn around and ask Bob a question so I can get back to getting his email address to be able to send that to Bob. Now, I just shared with you basically what these next couple slides are. I didn't need to read it I've done this so often and done multiple variations of what I shared with you that I just have my key, sell, my, my key points that I want to make sure that I cover. Four years list in the physician's desk reference, clinically proven, 262 verified quality assurance steps, 120-day money-back guarantee. So would you like to use Project Plus? As I, in, this, in the context of my conversation with Bob, I didn't use that question because it's not yet appropriate to it. Now, if Bob said to me, well, sure, go ahead and send me that video, but how would I get that product? Well, now, you know, I've created a real interest in Bob for that product, and we would then dialogue in a different conversation. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you that once you've been given permission to send them an email, what does that email look like? Well, I try and craft my emails with fact, truth, and a story. And so what I want to do is I want to show you in today's presentation a basic template for an email. Again, we're recording today's Saturday presentation. It goes up Tuesday on YouTube on our Synergy family. It will be uh, in the newsletter that goes out on Tuesday. So you can always go and stop the recording at the next slide that I'm going to show you. Here's the slide that I would end up, or here's the email that I would end up sending to Bob or some type of adaptation of this email. Again, dear Bob, it was great meeting you today at whatever that meeting was. If it was a family event, I would say, dear Bob, it was great meeting you today at our family picnic. I wanted to follow through on sending you this link to the video on high blood pressure. When you watch it, you're going to learn how nitric oxide therapy can naturally address your high blood pressure. Again, I'm continuing to reinforce what I already put into Bob's mind, nitric oxide therapy to naturally address his high blood pressure. 
Now, here's the story. Sherry is one of my clients. In, in, if I was talking to Bob and, and he was a family member, I'd say, Sherry, my wife, used this information to help her with her blood pressure. If I'm talking to someone who doesn't know my wife, Sherry, I would just use Sherry as one of my clients, who used this information to help her with her high blood pressure. When I met her, her blood pressure was 160 over 90. She was faced with the decision to either go on medication or use this natural method to address her issue. She decided to apply nitric oxide therapy, and the result was her blood pressure returned to normal. Now her blood pressure reading is consistently 112 over 68. Here's the link to the video. Now, before I go in further into this, you know, that, that story, that testimonial. Now, maybe Sherry's not your wife, but you want to adapt this. Again, when you come to that second paragraph where you're sharing a testimonial, you can adapt that. One of my colleagues has a client named Sherry who used this information to help her with her high blood pressure. At the time, her blood pressure was 160 over 90, and she was faced with the decision to either go on medication or use this natural method to address her issue. She decided to apply nitric oxide therapy, and the result was her blood pressure returned to normal. Now her blood pressure reading is consistently 112 over 68. So you can take that second paragraph and you can adapt it for yourself even if Sherry's not your client. My colleague has a client named Sherry. Here's the link to the video, and there's the link. Now, where did I get that link? Well, uh, let me quickly get out of this presentation. And where did I get the link? I went to our website that we've created that we talked, uh, la no, not last week, but two weeks ago, this website has been created, OurSynergyFamily.com, to help you have all the resources that you need at your fingertips. And so what I did is I scrolled down, clicked on Synergy Library, and then I scrolled down and clicked on Health and Business Video Library. And then I opened up the health videos. And as I scroll down, I've got the older versions of the health videos on the top. And then we have all the newer versions of the health videos on the bottom. And I picked this one here, how nitric oxide therapy addresses high blood pressure. Now, I've got, we're a little bit slow because we're on the Zoom platform, so it takes a little while for things to load up properly. There you go. And there is the video. So all I did is I right-clicked, copied video URL, and then I pasted it into my email that I would send to that person. That's where that URL address came from. I'll call you on such and such a date. Again, remember my conversation with Bob, I established a day and time for, for us to get back together. So I wanna remind Bob in my email what that date and time is to see if you have any questions. However, feel free to call me before that if you have questions on the information you're about to hear and see. Have a blessed day, Dan. So uh, again, the whole structure is a very short email. There's really only four paragraphs to it. Each paragraph is fairly short. The most important paragraph is the testimonial one. It's the longest one. A link to the video. And then the last paragraph is establishing the day and time and giving Bob the opportunity that if he wants to call me before that, go ahead and do so. And then I would just make sure in my email uh, that I have my phone number on, the, on my email. So that's the basic template. And you can, even use, you, know, you can even use questions when you're giving people information. Um, so let, let, let's say that uh, I'm in a conversation with Bob and I'm, you know, we're, we're having more of an engaged conversation on nitric oxide therapy. And uh, he says, he, he asked me a question. Well, uh, no, I've never heard of nitric oxide therapy, but before I can answer, ask him a question, Bob says to me, what is it? Well, if Bob asked me that question, what is it? I can't just ignore him. I would say, well, Bob, nitric oxide therapy is Nobel Prize winning information. Back in 1998, three American researchers were awarded the Nobel Prize for 
discovering how a lining of your vascular system, what's called the endothelium, takes this amino acid, L-arginine, and converts it to nitric oxide, which is the master signaling molecule of your entire vascular system. And what it does is it vasodilates, it relaxes the smooth muscle of your vascular wall to improve your blood flow. And that, for most people, naturally returns their blood pressure back to normal. Does this make sense? See, so again, if I'm engaged in that conversation, I want to ask them, does this make sense? Because I want to build off of that. Yes, it, it does. Or no, it doesn't. Then I want to ask, you know, what doesn't make sense to you? If they say yes, well, what does make sense to you? You know, how, how do you, how, Bob, how can you, how do you see this applying to your situation? You know, so, so again, there's ways of using the art of asking questions to be able to continue to build information and make sure that the information you give a person is not overwhelming to them. Um, another one, how can you, you, you know, can you see how this information can be beneficial to you? So the statement that I just gave to Bob, I could see asking this question. So can you see, Bob, how this relaxation of your vascular wall through nitric oxide therapy could help you address your high blood pressure? Yeah, Dan, I could. Well, great. Would you like me to send you a fantastic video that's going to explain to you how nitric oxide therapy can be a natural way to address your high blood pressure? Again, I want to be able to put information into the hands of Bob that will help him completely understand his deep need for this information, the nitric oxide therapy, and gosh, I want to get a product that's going to help me. And as I follow up with Bob, I've established his desire for wanting that product because he can see it as a way to help him address his health issues. Now, as I've shared, the art of asking questions is both an art and a skill. It's an art in that it can take many different forms and requires creativity on your part. It's a skill that there's always a template that you can use in this process of asking questions. And you can apply it for anything. You can apply it for microbiome research. You can apply it for holistic skin care. You can apply it to the business opportunity. You know, I'm going to be meeting with an individual at 12 noon today, Central Standard Time, who's interested in coming into the business. He sent me... How many questions has he sent me? 12 different questions that he wants to go over with me today. Well, I, he, he's using the art of asking questions. And so I'm going to make sure that I answer those questions for him by bringing him onto a Zoom presentation. You have the ability to do the same thing and be able to answer those questions by showing him information that he'll have access to if he decides to come into the Synergy business. Uh, and, and so in that process, I will be using, his, his first name is Dan. I'll be using, Dan, does this make sense to you? Do you see how this could be beneficial to you in building your business? Now, he shared with me that he's, had a, he, he's tried network marketing before and had a bad experience with it. And, you know, he was reluctant. to. I, I, I've never pressed him on this, but it's something that he wants to do. He's talked it over with his wife. They've come to the uh, decision that this is something that he wants to do again. And so as I go through that process, I'll ask him, so, Dan, can you see how this is different than your last experience in network marketing? Because his last experience was negative. So I want to use what I'm going to do with him today as I answer his questions and use the art of asking questions to be able to help him tell me that he sees this as a completely different process than what he experienced before. To make sure that I don't repeat some of the mistakes that were made with him and his experience before but rather understand how I can avoid those mistakes and be able to give him the best opportunity to be successful in wanting to take another chance on network marketing. So again, you know, this is an art and a skill. Microbiome research, talking to the person that they've 
they've told me that they've got some different types of abdominal distress. Well, Joan, have you ever thought about resetting your gut health to naturally address your abdominal distress? Or maybe it's weight management issues. Frank, let's be frank. Have you ever thought about resetting your gut health to naturally address your weight management issues? No? What is that? Well, I've got a, access to a fantastic video that's going to help you understand how the makeup of your gut bacteria actually creates your weight management issues. And that if you change that bacteria, you can increase your probability of getting fat off your frame. Would that video be of interest to you? So, uh, so again, you know, uh, I don't have those additional questions. It's just you, you, when, you, when you practice this and do this, you're going to get better and better. It's a skill, like any skill. When you first tried riding your bike as a little kid, you, you certainly didn't ride that bike without your hands on the handlebar. And as you got better in balance, you're able to ride your bike. I, I used to ride my bike without using my hands, and we would go around corners without the hands because you knew how to balance on the bike to lean into the corner to be able to keep the wheel straight without crashing. Again, it's like any skill. As you apply it, you get better at it. Holistic skin care. Would you be interested in a natural way to improve your skin tone? So, uh, again, I hope that this information is helpful to you. We've got time here. Uh, we've got, let's see, we've got uh, a couple more minutes before we close up our call. Do I have any questions from anyone that would like to ask me a question? You'll have to unmute yourself because I muted everyone. Yeah, no questions for me, Dan. Great presentation. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob. You're Anyone else have any questions or comments yes, that you want to share John, this morning? Yes, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is a kind of hypothetical. Suppose you, you have a, a being with individual who have a, a mindset form that that um, resists and product their product from synergy for whatever reason, um, and um, or they resist the whole idea if you're offering them the, the business opportunity. Um, the whole thing about um, network marketing, which is a heard this bad story about it. Um, what sort of questions do, do you, do you uh, envision that you would ask to be able to offset the barriers, these obstacles that, that, that the person may, may put up against what you're saying? Okay, so that's a great question, John. So let's just do a little bit of role play and let's take network marketing. And, and John, uh, uh, let's let's role play where you've had a negative experience with network marketing, so I can kind of show you what to do. Is that is that workable for you? Does that work for you, John? You need to do a, a, a role playing. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. And yeah. and so so you've had you've had a negative experience in network marketing. You know, I don't know if you have or not, or maybe you've talked to people that have had a, a negative experience. And so I would do something like this, John. I would say, John, so I understand from what you're sharing with me that you had a negative experience with your last company in network marketing. Is that, did I hear you correctly? Yes, you, you heard correctly. Okay. So, John, do you feel comfortable sharing with me what that negative experience was? Um, the, the overriding thing in my mind that, that has been made with me is the fact that I, I felt abandoned by those persons who said they were going to be working alongside me. I, I just felt abandoned by them. So, so um, and that feeling of abandonment led to my disillusionment with the whole process of that work marketing. Um, okay. So, so I want to make sure I heard that correctly, John. Uh, what, I, what I'm hearing from you is that your biggest disappointment was that people convinced you to come into a network marketing company that they were going to give you help and support and so you made the decision to join them and then what you found from your experience is that they gave you no support no help actually uh you were kind of like an orphan trying to figure this business out by yourself is that true that's very correct okay any other negative experiences that you want to share with me before i address that one 
Um, the, the only other thing I would add to that is the fact that it, it seemed after a while that, that um, I was I was just um, recruited to, to um, for money to be made off of me, and um, and that that even grew stronger as I felt abandoned by by the same people who had hired me. Um, I I don't know if your what you're offering is different, but that certainly sets up in me a, a, a caution about any person coming to me um, offering anything that's a lot of network marketing. Okay, so again, I want to make sure I understood that correctly, John. So what I'm hearing from you is that after you joined and after they abandoned you, you felt the only reason why they wanted you in their organization is so that they could make money from you. Did I hear that correctly? That's correct. All right. Now, so let me address both of those issues. And, and again, understand, John, that you, know, you don't know me you know, from the standpoint that we've never worked together. Uh, but I, all I can do is I can show you why I'm different. And then it's up to you to decide if that difference is enough to overcome some of these feelings that you have. And so, John, one of the things I want you to understand is that if you decide to join me and our Synergy family and the Synergy Worldwide Business Opportunity, then one of the things that you're going to have access to is a whole website designed to help you build your synergy business. It's called Our Synergy Family. Uh, I'm not going to take time to show you everything, but I want you to understand that we have resource tools that will help you understand how to implement different types of marketing strategies. We have a whole training program, a step-by-step -step process that if you follow the steps, even if you feel abandoned, you're still going to be able to follow those steps to be able to make sure that you can implement your synergy business. But I want you to understand that I have a vested interest in your success. See, in Synergy Worldwide, there are seven streams of income. And John, one of those streams of income is what's called a mega match. A mega match means that if I'm properly qualified in Synergy Worldwide, and I've sponsored you into Synergy Worldwide, and you start building your synergy business and earn what's called basic commission. I earn a dollar for dollar match on the basic commission of what you earn because I'm your sponsor. So I want you to understand, John, that I have a vested interest in your success. That if I personally sponsored you, then the more that I can help you build your synergy business and build it successfully so that you can increase your basic commission, I'm going to get rewarded by that, by that because I earn a dollar-for-dollar dollar match on your basic commission. So it's important for me to work with you and help you be successful in this process. Now, I can't do the work for you, but I certainly will come alongside you and be able to show you how to use this website properly, how to be able to adapt some of the materials that we have for your market, and be able to give you wisdom and guidance from my experience in Synergy Worldwide to help you implement the marketing strategies. I can't implement them for you, but I can certainly give you wisdom and guidance and coaching on how to properly implement them. So I am, I am here to help you. Now, I want you to understand, I'm not going to pester you, but I will respond to any needs that you have. So this is a two-way street. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to waste my time. I want to work with you productively so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish in Synergy. Helping people, I would assume, with better health, but most likely also build a vibrant network marketing business that's producing an income stream for you. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And, um, it sounds certainly um, somewhat different from what I, I heard in the past. And, uh, it seems as though you have an emphasis more on teamwork than what I, what I um, became aware of from my past experience. Well, you, spent, you, you, were, you mentioned the word teamwork, so let me just click on that icon because teamwork is important to us. We believe in teamwork to help you build a dynamic synergy team. And so we have a Saturday training program that we do every Saturday morning that you can plug into. 
that allows you to have training to be able to improve your skills and better understand the synergy opportunity. We have a bi-weekly newsletter that you can sign up for. It comes through our MailChimp that we keep you informed on Tuesdays and Fridays of what's going on. You can, you can subscribe to the Synergy blog so that the Synergy blog from Synergy Worldwide will keep you posted on things that are coming out from Synergy. We've got ways for you to connect with us on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and Synergy also has these other programs like Title Plus and Leadership Retreats that all is predicated on teamwork, working together to help you build your Synergy business. Because if I can model for you good teamwork, good leadership, then you can model good teamwork, good leadership with those that you sponsor, and we all benefit. Does that make sense? Yeah, it certainly does. It really sounds something that I would be willing to, to give it a try. Okay. So, so that's you know, all I can do is I can all I can do is show you at this time what I can do for you. And like anything, people promise stuff. Uh, you know, you don't know me more than you know what we've just met now. But I've been with Synergy Worldwide since two thousand six. And, and so, you know, I, I believe Synergy Worldwide, and I've had plenty of other opportunities to join other companies with other procs. I've resisted it all the time because there's no better procs than what Synergy Worldwide has, especially for what I believe is the most important area of health, nitric oxide therapy. And I love their compensation plan because it's all based upon teamwork. So all I can do is if you decide to join, I will need to prove myself to you just like you have to prove yourself to me. It's a mutual relationship. Make sense? It certainly does. And um, I, I, I must say at this time that um, I, I, I got curious about, about, about Synergy because of a, a story I heard of someone who benefited from um, one of the supplements they were taking that was produced by Synergy. So that, that's what started my interest. And, and, uh, um, really allowed me to persist in this conversation with you because I really was at a point where I was really fed up with anything that was uh, uh, dealing with network marketing. And um, so deep was my disappointment. So um, I want to thank you for, for what you shared and I will give serious consideration for uh, the information you shared with me and the forward of communicating with you further on this matter. Yeah, and, and so John, just as a summary for what we just role played, I want to identify their negative experience by asking a question, and then I want to ask them a question, what was their negative experience? Allow them to share with me the things that they didn't like about their last company so that I know how to properly position information to show that their experience with me and Synergy is going to be different than what they experienced before. And you can only do that by asking questions and their responses because it's what's important to them, not what's important to you. Make sense? Make sense. Understand. Great. Thank yeah. you, John. Thanks for role playing. Okay. You're welcome. Anyone else with any questions or comments before we say goodbye today? Hello, All right. Hello, Dan. It's Donald. Yes, Donald. Um, I particularly like the uh, extended version um, when John asked, about teamwork, giving you the opportunity to explain um, the depth of teamwork and uh, so that an individual who is down the, down the line can refer to uh, the team, the wider team. So that was, that was powerful. Okay, and I, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Donald, because uh, I'm going to read a question here that I have. Okay, question number six from Dan that I'm going to meet with at 12 noon today is what business material should I have on hand? Well, what did I do is if I'm, if I'm meeting with John face to face and we're in a Wi-Fi situation and I've got my tablet with me, then I'm going to, or my phone, I'm going to pull up on my phone or my tablet or my laptop, our Synergy family. That's a free resource. There's no cost to you. There's no cost to Dan. There's no cost to John. There's no cost to anyone on this call this morning to use this. And so what did I do 
is I used a visual tool, took them to the Synergy family, clicked on teamwork, and in that process of clicking on teamwork, then I used that to reinforce his desire to be in a company that fosters teamwork. Or if a person said to me, you know, gosh, we had some really bad resources. You know, what, what resources do I have from your company? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me take you to our website that we created for our Synergy family that if you join us, join me, let me be your sponsor, join our team, our Synergy family, become part of the Synergy Worldwide, you're going to have access to this website. So I pull up the website, I click on resources, and here are resources that you're going to have access to. Our nitric oxide therapy is one of our major marketing strategies. And here at your fingertips or click, you can get all the major resources that we use to be able to help us build that business. Maybe you want to focus on microbiome research. Here are all our major resources that you have available to you. Holistic skin care. We've got key videos that we use all the time. You know, a person wants to know, well, why should I use Prorogen Plus? Well, it's clinically proven. Would you like a video that shows you why it's clinically proven and how that can improve your health? So again, you can take them down through this website. You can help them. We also give you fantastic tools that Synergy Worldwide has created, and we give you direct links into those tools. You will never be able to tell me that you don't have access to good tools because we made it easy for you to find the access that you need, and most of these tools are free. Some of the ones that you're gonna get from Synergy Worldwide, if you're looking for PDFs, they're free. If you're looking for hard copy, there's a cost through Sound Concept, a printing cost. But they'll sell it to you and ship it to you, and the shipping's free. And you can get a 20% discount on your first order. So, you know, there, there are some things that you might have to pay a cost for, but the vast majority of information that you have access to is free. Outside of your time learning how to use them effectively and then putting them in, into the hands of people. Does that make sense, Donald? Most likely put yourself on mute. Yeah. Yes, Dan, it certainly does. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Donald. Well, thank you. Thanks for leading us there. You're welcome. Anyone else with any questions or comments before we say goodbye? All right. I want to thank you for your time today. Next Saturday, there is no presentation because I'm and, and Bob and Judy and, and a couple of the other people in Synergy Worldwide that lead Saturday programs, webinars. We're going to be at the uh, Experience Synergy Convention on Friday and Saturday. And, and so there is no conference call next Saturday. But we'll return two weeks from today. We'll give you an update on the Experience Synergy presentation. And then we've got some other really good Saturday presentations planned for the rest of September. And I think the first week in October. With that said, everyone, enjoy your Saturday. Have a blessed day.